persons who are trying to make a, a living in this sector cannot get sufficient loans. There are many times I wanted to do projects and the fact that I didn't have access to a film fund, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't follow through. I know of a lot of people who basically get frustrated. A region that is so culturally rich and diverse should never be classified as poor. The creative industries are very important in the Caribbean. In the region, we have traditionally relied on crops like sugar, bananas, uh, bauxite. But with the lowering of prices in these products, services has become a very important part of the Caribbean economy and the Jamaican economy. And within the services sector, cultural and creative industries like music, like art, like animation, all of these things have become very important to the Jamaican economy. We as Caribbean people have distinguished ourselves through cultural and creative production. You see, if we don't have much, or the masses of the Caribbean people don't have much by way of physical assets, and what we have relied on significantly is our creative imagination. And that has really propelled us and really distinguished us in the world. The, the, the creative industries is actually a, a multi-billion US dollar industry globally and if we are able to secure just um, a small percentage of that in the region it could be um, a game-changing situation for, for these economies. There is the increased recognition um, within the region of um, the importance of this sector to, to the economy and, and consequently to inform policy, government policy, and also um, corporate policy. It is important for us to, to do the research, to understand the nature of these industries. This research project was called Creative Industry Study in the Caribbean. It was done in four countries, in Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Colombia. And the idea really was to find out what are the characteristics of creative entrepreneurs in these countries and what are the obstacles and challenges that they face. The project is exploring the extent to which young people who are looking to emerge within this new sector can do so with a limited number of impediments. In other words, what are the facilitators that can drive engagement of young persons in the areas of entrepreneurship. Securing um, financing um, in the creative industries is a fundamental um, challenge and it, it is not unique, right? Um, other industries also face um, this challenge, but it takes on an additional um, significance where this industry is concerned because the output is usually intangible. There is no way that you can uh, do a prototype for instance, of a, of, of a movie and to say, okay, this is the expected demand, this is the you know, anticipated um, revenue. All of those variables are uncertain and consequently, um, it makes these ideas, you know, it, it makes it quite difficult to attract financiers. One of the main challenges I had while starting up my company in Jamaica was capital. Um, there are many times I wanted to do projects and the fact that I didn't have access to a film fund, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't follow through with the projects. For one, getting a loan, they want collateral and they ask you about um, what kind of income you have and, and, and proving that you are making X amount of money every week so you can be able to pay back that loan. And being a creative person, working in a creative field, it doesn't really work like a nine to five where every week you can guarantee you're gonna make a 10,000 or a 20,000. I've been through it like to get even a vehicle and at the end of the day, it's one of my family member I had to basically do the paperwork so I could get the loan. You have to basically have the dream and do it yourself. I know of a lot of people who basically get frustrated by working with the system and trying to get that loan and trying to get that money. It's more an heartache than something that, that is encouraging. Entrepreneurs need startup funding and the startup funding that's available 
are usually used up by companies that the government feels they are more positive in terms of them turning over the money. But what about creative persons with innovative ideas? We need to take the risk and foster these innovative ideas so we can have more different types of business coming on board. I think we, we need to change the modalities because obviously the collateralized approach is not ideal for funding cultural production. And I have been a strong advocate, for example, of venture capital, which is better constructed to accommodate the, the, the risk taking that is associated with cultural production. The other area, of course, is training that many of these training institutions that offer skill sets in uh, the cultural industries do not train these graduates in the entrepreneurial or business side of the project. Most of the traditional training initiatives right now focuses um, on the core technical skills, building those out um, for that particular group of persons, um, and they neglect the management and business side of things. And so um, issues like intellectual property, um, budgeting and accounting, uh, communication skills, you know, how they relate to um, clients and even themselves, um, those opportunities are missed because there are no initiatives that actually focus on that right now. Training is a significant source of value creation. If you are well equipped to navigate the, 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 the international um, business spaces, then obviously you will be able to extract greater value. One of the things we found in this project was that the ICT platforms were not in use as much as they should have been by the creative entrepreneurs. Things like e-commerce, e-banking, social media platforms, so what we really think is that more training needs to be done in this area um, to teach these persons how it is that they can use ICTs to improve their businesses. And then there's a whole area of government support. It is the case that many of these startups encounter high tax uh, requirements and what we are saying is that governments should be looking to provide more incentives tax reliefs, and generally stimulate and help promote the industry in a way that will enable them to thrive. There are times when these international companies look at the high tax um, incentives as well as the cost of living and um, it's too much so they rather go to other Caribbean countries to shoot. In terms of film production, as you saw Home Again was going to be shot in Jamaica and they had to go to Trinidad because the Trinidad government provide, provides incentive for filmmakers going to their country to shoot by giving them 30 something percent of whatever the production cost is. But the flip side to this is that when those filmmakers go to your country and you give them this 30 percent, your country is benefiting, plus more persons are exposed to this level of production in your country. So it's increasing the expertise, providing part-time jobs. So the, the, the benefits are, trust me, above and beyond. I would want um, Caribbean creative industries, entrepreneurs to be more strategic in their approach. That is to, 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 to um, always keep an eye um, on the horizon, what disruptive business models um, are, are emerging, what new technologies are emerging that they can leverage right, to make their products uh, more innovative and uh, more, more valuable. A region that is so culturally rich and diverse should never be classified as poor. We have too many intellectual assets uh, which we could use to our advantages and we, we have not. You know, I think we have a bias towards things we can touch and feel. You know, that, that, that is perhaps a carryover from our past. And, and so we don't tend to attach as much value to those things which, which flow from the imagination.